Hi everybody, in this video we are going to discuss the capacitor, its basic principles and the voltage and current relationship. So let's start with the basic setup of a capacitor. A capacitor consists of two plates which are drawn over here and one over here, which has a, have a surface A. And these plates are separated from each other on a distance D. And in between these plates there is a isolator which is a material which does not connect, conduct any electricity. And it could be paper or plastics or ceramics or even um, a, 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 a liquid like electrolyte, which is a chemical substance. And when we put a battery on this capacitor, this capacitor will be charged. And based on this setup, we can give the relationship of these physical parameters and the capacitance of this capacitor. And this capacitance is equal to an epsilon, which is the dielectric constant of the material in between these plates, so the electrical constant of the isolator, times A divided by D. So what we see over here is that when we have a capacitor with a higher surface A, that capacitance value will be higher. And when we put these plates on a shorter distance, so when D gets smaller, then also the capacitance value will increase. What is capacitance? Capacitance is expressed in a unit farad. It means that the current of one ampere, one amps, through a capacitor of one farad causes a voltage change of one volt per second across the capacitor. Well, then we can uh, give the relationship between the current, the time and the voltage based on this expression, which says that the capacitance is the charge, electrical charge, over the voltage UC, which is the voltage which we place over this capacitance. And this Q, which is the charge of the capacitor, is the current I times the time T. So it brings us relationship, C is I times T over UC, which equals C is Q over UC. Well, let's look to the symbol of a capacitor. Uh, we see here the symbol of both plates, which are not connected because there is an isolator in between, which we saw also in this picture. These are the wires of the capacitor, and when the current flows through that capacitor, there will uh, be a voltage over these plates, which we call UC. Sometimes capacitance values have a polarity, plus and a minus, and then we put a plus and a minus over here in that symbol. We call them electrolytes, electrical capacitors. One important aspect of a capacitor is that the capacitor stores electrical energy. Well, let's look to the series and parallel connections of more capacitors in a circuit. When we put two capacitors in a parallel connection, then we can add these capacitors up to a placement capacitor according to this, to this formula, which says that the replacement capacitance value of a parallel network consisting of several independent capacitors is equal to the sum of all these capacitance. So here there are two capacitors, so the capacitance value of this parallel connection is C1 plus C2. Well, how can you remember this? Well, when we put this capacitor somewhat closer to this capacitor, we can imagine that these plates are connected to each other and are um, making it to a, a bigger plate and we have seen in this sheet over here that when the total surface increases the capacitance value will increase also. So by putting them in parallel we can say well it's more or less becoming one big capacitor. So again in the parallel connection the replacement capacitor value is the sum of both capacitance value and, because, and when we have more capacitors of course in parallel it is the sum of all these capacitance values. When we place capacitors in series then we have uh, we can calculate the replacement capacitor by 
the inverse capacitor is the summation of the inverse capacitor 1 plus the inverse capacitor 2 plus and so on uh, the number of capacitors which we have put in series so again 1 over the replacement capacitor value so um, the inverse um, capacitor value the replacement capacitor value is 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 etc. So that is really different when we compare that to resistors in parallel and in series. Remember that it's the opposite um, way of uh, calculating the replacement value. Now let's look to the current and voltage relationship. Well the voltage change, the UDT, the derivative of the voltage, so the voltage change is proportional to the current supplied. So the higher the current, the faster the voltage changes. So, let, well, let's have a look into that. Suppose we have a electrical scheme, scheme uh, drawn over here, which we have a current source which supplies this capacitor from electrical charge. So this capacitor will be charged by this current source. Well, there is an important relationship between voltage and currents for a capacitor, which says that the current through a capacitor is a capacitance value C times du dt, which is the change of the voltage. So I is C times the change of the voltage, which is C times the derivative of the voltage. Well, um, in this example, we have a uh, constant current over here from this current source. And now we can um, look how this voltage change will be. Um, when this is a constant value, then we can calculate the U from this expression. I over C is du dt, or U is the integral of I to time divided by C. Well, when this current is a constant value, the integral, which is the surface underneath this figure, underneath this curve, will be proportional increasing when time increases. So, in this situation, the capacitance voltage, U, is I times T divided by C. So, the, when the current is constant, the voltage will increase linearly uh, according to this blue line. Then something about the energy in a capacitor. Um, the energy which is stored in a capacitor is equal to the energy uh, is 0.5 times C, the capacitance value, times U squared. So U times U. Remember that the energy in a capacitor uh, called with a W over here is 0.5 times C times U squared. Okay, well, let's look to some current voltage relationship examples. And we uh, still are going to use this setup. So our current source will supply this capacitor uh, with a current, so charging it from this current source. And we will have a look um, when this uh, uh, current source is. Um, changing its value to a positive value and negative value, what it will do with the voltage. And in my example, we have placed a capacitor value of 1 microfarad, which is 1 times 10 to the uh, power of minus 6 farad. It's a micro. This is my important relationship. I is C times du dt, or C times the derivative of the voltage. Well, what happens over here? We have a constant current supplied to that capacitor. And when time increases, also the surface underneath, underneath this curve will increase proportionally. So it will be a linear relationship. And the maximum value of that voltage over here, we can calculate it by um, multiplying the current value, which is 2 milliamps, so 2 times 10 to the power minus 3 amps times 2 milliseconds, which is 2 times 10 to the power minus 3 seconds, which is 4 times 10 to the, uh, to the power minus 6, divided 
by the capacitance value of one microfarad so it brings us a voltage over here of four volt well that is expressed in this figure over here so it the voltage increases linearly and will have a maximum value over here which is four volt then the current will be switched to a negative value so we get more and more a negative area added to the positive value which we had over here and um, because of that the voltage will decrease linearly and of the, uh, at this point here in between the area underneath this curve so this area over here is equal to that area over here so the positive and the negative area here in the middle are the same so the voltage will be again zero volt well then um, the negative area increases 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 and at this point the total negative area is 6 milliseconds minus 2 milliseconds which is 4 milliseconds times minus 2 milliamps which is 8 to the power of minus 6 divided by 1 millifarad, millifarad which is minus 8 volt added to the maximum value which we had over here is 4 minus 8 is minus 4 volt so at this point the voltage across the capacitor will be minus 4 volt then the current is switched to positive value again and the positive area increases 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 and um, the voltage will go up linearly etc and here in the middle it's again uh, zero volt and here is it's at the positive value it's maximum positive value etc so this is the relationship when we supply a capacitor with a constant current which changes from a positive to negative value and we see what happens to the voltage across that capacitor well now look to the same situation but in between these positive and negative values which which we switch off the current source so the current will be zero in between these negative pulses and positive pulses now we uh, change the capacitor to a somewhat smaller value 0.5 microfarad microfarad so it's 0.5 times 10 to the power minus 6 farad so what will the voltage do again it will because of the current which is a constant value the voltage will increase linearly to a maximum value over here the maximum value of the voltage is 2 milliamps times 1 milliseconds which is 2 to the power two, 2 times 10 to the power minus 6 divided by the current value 0.5 uh, microfarad which is 2 times 10 to the minus to the power minus 6 divided by 0.5 to the power uh, times 10 to the power minus 6 2 divided by 0.5 is 4 volt so it's has maximum value over here of 4 volt then no area is added to the area which we had over here there is no charge increasing to the capacitor the capacitor is also not decharged so the voltage stays the same at a level of 4 volt and then we get a negative area over here which means that the voltage will decrease linearly according to this line and um, at this value we have 5 minus uh, 3 which is 2 milliseconds times minus 2 milliamps which is 2 times 2 4 to, times 10 to the power minus 6 divided by 0.5 microfarad which is 8 volt underneath this value so it ends up at minus 4 volt then no area is added over here so the voltage stays the same positive current will um, increase the voltage to a linear line etc etc so it's important to notice that when we have a, a, a current of no amps the voltage at this ideal capacitor will stay the same well now have uh, we will look to a, a small example in which we supply this capacitor with an ac voltage source and that ac voltage is um, uh, expressed over here which is u top times the sine of omega t so the frequency of this voltage is the radial frequency is omega and it will um, this voltage source will supply a current 
to this capacitor with the same frequency omega but we will have a quick look in how the current will uh, will be expressed when we have a sine wave voltage as expressed over here the relationship between current and voltage for the capacitor stays the same of course which was i is c times du dt or i is c times the change of the voltage well we supply this capacitor with a voltage and this sine wave voltage is drawn over here which is the red curve the red sine wave okay so when we look to the capacitor current we can calculate it by this formula which is c times the derivative of the voltage and the derivative of a sine gives us a cosine which is expressed over here the blue curve so what we see over here is something strange we see that the current over here leads the voltage over here because here because of the cosine wave of the current this current is at a stop and the voltage is 90 degrees later at its stop value so the current leads the voltage we can also say the voltage lags the current well when we know that we can also define a so-called vector diagram or phasor diagram uh, diagram we will look into that in more detail in the next video but what we do in this um, vector diagram is we put the absolute value of the current so the top value of the current on the horizontal axis and then we draw also the top value of the voltage in this curve and we put that um, on the negative y-axis and uh, why is it because why is it on the negative uh, y-axis because the voltage lags the current with 90 degrees which we can see over here and we define this angle as minus 90 degrees this will be plus 90 degrees and because of that relationship of um, lagging the voltage towards the current or the current leads the voltage we can get this vector or phasor diagram in which the voltage lags the current as, be, as drawn over here well that's all about the basics of the capacitor which we have um, discussed and we have seen that there are two important relationships the first one was the capacitor's value is epsilon the dielectric constant of the material in between the plates times a divided by d and we have the relationship between voltage and current of a capacitor which says that i is c times the derivative of the voltage c times du dt thank you for watching and till next time